I grew up around some of the people who might have some of the secrets to the New World Order. In fact, I'd say, yeah, they do. Kevin Blankaspore grew up in Reston, Virginia, went on to design robots, which is what he does now. Mikey Sherrill grew up in Reston, Virginia, went on to work for the Navy, and now she's a congresswoman in Washington, D.C., and I've been to her office. I'm sorry if this video makes anybody upset, but it makes me upset that we have to look at a future where this is the kind of thing that we have to worry about. A lot of people like to talk a lot of shit, including me. Here's some shit that y'all might not know. So as you study humanity and culture and society, you learn that culture diffuses from major cosmopolitan cities around the world, like a New York or a Beijing or an Abu Dhabi. Culture takes 20 to 30 years to get from a major city center out to the rural areas and fully transform. By the time those country or countryside areas are to where New York was, New York's 20 or 30 years ahead. Much in the same way we can receive technology and humanity. The military is usually 20 to 30 years of the public in all technology. So when Dynacorp announces that they're building robot dogs, they want to put a billion robot dogs on Mars within a certain number of years, we've never even been to the moon, literally. Ask any real person. You can't fly to the moon in 1969 in a contraption the size of an SUV on a few metal sticks Land it on the moon and then blast it off the moon and fly back here in it. It's not happening. So the lies need to stop from the government. And as far as technology and things like that in culture, think about science like that as well. When did they start telling us that cloning was possible? When did they tell us about in vitro fertilization? When did they tell us about all these strange advances in human breeding and human biome that can be grown in another person? or retrieved from a person and frozen in a freezer and then given and conceived later. For instance, if I was a young man and I masturbated and put semen and it was frozen and another woman donated her eggs to science or was paid for it, if they keep that stuff frozen, apparently they can make children from me or that woman infinitely into the future as long as those embryos or sperm or those eggs or whatever stay frozen or properly uh, cared for, I guess. So that's kind of something strange to think about, especially for this culture that we had that for a while, a lot of people were just jerking off a lot to get money for like gas or beer or pizza. I never did, but I know people who did. Um, so technology diffuses so i was like thinking about these robot dogs and they said they want billion robot dogs to put on mars in like 10 years or by 2030 i'm thinking like well how many robot dogs they have already built because if you want to subdue a city and you have new technology and you have a war zone to test your new technology you never even give the technology to law enforcement or soldiers you simply install it on robot dogs that can be controlled by Nimcom poops with remote, remote controls or with AI where the robot dogs act in unison, much like a school of fish or a flock of birds in the air or swimming in the sea. And so it becomes real scary real quick because law enforcement is starting to have a heart right now in the United States. And so if your law enforcement has a heart, they're not going to shoot their brothers and their sisters anymore. But if you have these technologies like a sick stick that makes you sick, but it really just gives you a little burst of microwave. You know, like a microwave oven, ooh, you feel sick for all, ooh, ooh, and you're sick. But if people don't understand it or law enforcement don't understand it, it's new technology, but it's old methods and old ideology just reinforced or recycled after these many years, these many eons or whatever you want to call it. Um, law enforcement won't know how to defend from these new so-called new weapons. Now, the thing to think about it, this is too, all this research and development, maybe they're saying it's for this or for that or for that. Really, it's some kind of a factory somewhere where they're fucking having robots make robot dogs fucking 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, probably for the past few years now. So any city that gets out of line, they'll just drop off them robot dogs like they dropped off them robots in them Star Wars movies. And then the robots just run out and kill motherfuckers. So robots could subdue a city. They could subdue a police force. Robots, if they have um, 
equipment that can like desensitize a machine. It can make your guns not work. It can make your electronics not work. And actually they can force people to stay in their homes and they can use non-lethal methods that make you feel sick in the stomach or maybe sonic sounds that fuck your brain up and hurt your brain with noises. And I've felt some of these things in DC, including the things with the sounds and the sicknesses in different areas, mostly around the White House sometimes when I was living out there. So like the thing is like, we need to be careful. We need to fix these things because we cannot have this exist. And then I thought to myself, well, it's interesting because I was in a band with a man named Kevin Blankaspore from Reston, Virginia, sisters Jill and Juliet, father Gus and Joanna. And Kevin's from Reston. He married Lisa Slumba. Last I heard, they have two daughters and they live up, I think, in Alston or somewhere up there near Boston in the suburbs of Boston. Kevin was one of the main designers for these robot dogs for Dynacorp. And I was in a hardcore punk rock band, supposedly with him back in the day. Well, whatever. A vicious dog number seven. So, so Kevin's represented Dynacorp for the robot dogs when it was featured on Anderson Cooper like two years ago while I was homeless. So the thing is, like, I want to talk to Kevin personally and be like, bro, what's up, man? Like, can you help us, bro? And like Kevin Blankaspor, you need to help us from the rest of Virginia. And the funny, weird thing is, is like other people in that band went on to be band members with HR, with the HR band. Jason Browning went on to play guitar with HR. Um, I was in another band briefly before they played all these shows and stuff, but it was called Pitbull. The bass player from Pitbull went on to play bass. Jerry Barrett played bass for HR. And HR is the singer for Bad Brains, one of the founders of hardcore worldwide. The blending of Rastafari and hardcore and punk and all that. Bad Brains. So who else Who else from Reston played in uh, HR? Ben Blanton. I was in a band with Ben Blanton called the Ludovico Technique. Ben Blanton, a.k.a. Van Gazi. He played drums with HR, but I was in a band with him back in the day. He played guitar, Ludovico Technique. Who else? Oh, oh, Dave Stone, who I've known since seventh grade. Dave Stone also played guitar with the HR as he traveled. Let me remind you, I come from the place in the rest of Virginia where they experiment on children. And where my mother kept a mortar and pestle in the kitchen. I think she was putting stuff in my food, you know? And so... People have handlers in life. Nobody, nobody knows what happened to Bad Brains. Were they really banned in D.C. or was it a plot by punk rock and hardcore to get worldwide or to make a, make a chutzpah? Or, guess what? Was it really a plot against Bad Brains and against hardcore and Rastafari back in the day here in Washington, D.C.? And if so, and the plot went on and on and on, that means them fools that I grew up around who lied to me all these years about my so-called status and my mental state and all these other things... Now y'all fuck because guess what? Let's just be real. It's called woke. It's called uh, ESP. Uh, uh, it's called your third ear, your third eye, your third voice, whatever you want to call it. Clarions, clairvoyance. And the Pope and them try and hide it. And the military tries to hide it. And they try and brain mind screw us, all of us. The problem is, is y'all can't do that no more. And I know y'all been doing this and plotting it for a while. But you can't do it no more. It's done. Anyways. Technology gets received late. So, Kevin, I hope you can fucking talk to me at some point in the future. I hope you do, Kevin Blankaspore. You the key to surviving for a lot of this stuff for a lot of people because you know the keys to those robot dogs, Kevin. So does your wife. Please help us all, Kevin Blankaspore from rest of Virginia, son of Gus and Joanna. Please help us all. And, uh, yo, I just got to say this. Hey, uh, Kevin Blankaspore, a hey, uh, Mikey Cheryl. Is the robot dog factory in Ukraine? Is that one of the things that's going on over there that y'all are hiding? Someone please tell me. Or is it in the United States or some other country?